Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again. Oh, it's that time again. To get real with your boy, Ronald E. Smith, a.k.a. Ron Smith. And my guest today, oh, this guy. Let me tell you something about this man. Well, the people on Stardust may know him from his crazy ultimate ranks of Disney films. You may not also know that this man is not only a voice actor, but also an actor in a film known as Anhedonia, available on Amazon Prime right now. What? Are you crazy? Look, there's only one person I'm talking about. South Wales' own Mr. Ross Leash. How are you doing today? Uh, can you? Can I take you everywhere to introduce me, mate? Like in any situation I'm in, <laughs> can you just do the introductions? <laughs> oh, look, uh, man, you be good enough. I'll show up. No problem. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much for that, man. Oh, oh it's great, uh, great to be on here with you, chatting, my friend. Absolutely. Yes. You know, look, if people don't know, yes, on Stardust, I've met a lot of other people. And I've known Ross, never really had a full-on conversation with him. But right. that, yeah. that is where I really noticed the guy. And Ross, if I can tell you about him, he's a very talented dude. Like, oh, hey. more about what I really thought of him. His skill set is out of there. I got to <laughs> put that to the, to, to the truth. Am I paying you for these compliments now, man? Because I, I, <laughs> how am I going to get there get it to you? I don't know. Like, <laughs> no way <laughs> oh mate that means a lot honestly thank you and i'm so glad you brought up stardust because god what uh, not to plug it but what an amazing community it is you know and um yeah i saw you around on there and y y honestly um great presence and stuff like that great opinion on film but like you say we haven't really had a proper conversation i don't know how um but somehow we haven't had a conversation about it but stardust oh, it's a great app for it and yeah i did um I did like a comic book film ranking last year, I think, where I, where I did the worst to best films. And that took time. <laughs> but it was I, a lot of fun. Like, all those know? lists always do. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd recommend I'd recommend it to anyone, really, because, you know, it's just it's great to see film lovers all together in one place. And, and you know, there's there's not this um, cattiness to it or anything like that. It's just everybody's respectful and it's, uh, it's cool. So, yeah, Stardust is awesome, man. And while Stardust is great, yeah. this, this is about you. This is about Ross and everything that you've done and you're continuing to do for yourself as the future moves on. And with that, let's just go to the beginning. T tell us, because I've, tell us all about you, man. Like, tell us about your life growing up in South Wales. Yeah, so uh, once upon a time, no, I'm not joking. I was like, I'll go into every detail of That's the movie. <laughs> um so yeah i yeah uh, i'm actually from uh like a small town called estragon lice which i would love for you to try and pronounce my friend i mean oh my god i paid i paid you that um, <laughs> is that it us us tread gun lice astra gun lice <laughs> you, made, you made it sound more exotic mate i prefer you <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I, I kind of grew up there and everything and, um, it's just this small town just outside of Swansea in the Swansea valleys. And, um, yeah, I, I just loved, uh, films for as long as I can remember really. And I, and I, I, I don't know if I should say this cause it's not going to make me seem so intelligent, but you probably can grasp that at this point, my man. So, um, when I was younger, <laughs> Star Wars, uh, like any kid, you, you grew up with the Star Wars films, right? And I... I would watch um, uh, New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, like every weekend on repeat, you know. And and there was a point at some point in my childhood when I was watching them and I was thinking, wait, are these, <laughs> there's actors doing this stuff, right? You know, and I was, I know it's because you just see Princess Leia, you just see Luke Skywalker, you see Han Solo. As a kid, you don't think about the behind the scenes aspect, right? So I started to watch um, behind the scenes stuff of, of, of all these films I loved and I was like oh you know they, people are really enjoying bringing these films to life and obviously these films are having a massive effect on me entertaining me um, making me have es escapism um, or teaching me you know and, and I thought god that must be a really cool job to do and and I was I was I was a very um, lively kid 
Um, and then when I went to like secondary school, um, which I think would be middle school for yourself. Uh, am I right in that? So it's like 11 years old to about uh, 14, yes. 15. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, I became shy then. I didn't really love that time in school, if I'm honest. And um, I, I created the shyness. So even though I always secretly wanted to do um, acting and I'd never tried it, uh, I was like, you know, too shy and I didn't have the self-belief in myself. So when I was 18, I um, I was doing an interactive media course because I wanted to be a games designer because I love video games. Oh, okay. as well. Yeah, yeah, love love video games. And um, and there was this weird photo shoot that uh, me and my me and my friends in my class were doing, and it was on. Um, we had to pretend to be afraid of dinosaurs and stuff, and they were gonna like Photoshop dinosaurs in. It was the cheesiest thing you've ever seen in your life. Absolutely. <laughs> And uh, I had to do this cheesy pose to be scared and stuff like that, right? And I just thought, I am I am not nailing this at all, right? So um, my lecturer, the week afterwards, he was like, um, listen, you were, you were quite good at that stuff, you know, acting for the shots and stuff like that. Have you ever thought of acting? And I and he said it in front of the class, and we all kind of laughed, including myself. And um, I was like, are you serious? And he was like, yeah, yeah, I could probably get you onto um, onto a course for drama. And again, I didn't do drama in school. We didn't have it in my school either. Um, and even if we did have it, again, because I was lacking the confidence, probably wouldn't have been able to do it anyway. So um, anyway, the I I just flipped a coin in my head, basically, Ron, and I just said, yeah, yeah, okay, um, I'll go for it. And then started the course not long after that and I did homework on the first night and I was like oh my god what is this feeling I normally leave it to last Same. minute every single time um you know and I we did this exercise and I'll never forget it was one of those moments in my life that kind of really defines my life in some ways that I we did this like improvisation with this drama group and again I'd not done anything and we did it and then one of the people in the class said to me they were like so how long have you been doing drama for how long have you been acting for? And I just I just looked at the clock and I went, uh, about 20 minutes. Now. <laughs> <laughs> and they were shocked, you know, and they were like, oh, my God, I, that, I thought you'd been doing it for a while. So I was like, ah, OK, there must be something here. Not only do I love this stuff and I've secretly always wanted to do it, but there seems to be a bit of a natural talent there or something that I can improve on, you know. And ever since, I've never looked back. So ever since 18 years old, I've never really seen myself doing anything else. And I know, you know, it's what I want to do, really. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, um, how that started, really. Now, okay, you said that, you know, when you were young, like, that caught your eye on Star Wars. And I also see that, like me, you know, the one film that really brought your open eyes a lot, too, was Lion King. Yes, absolutely. Oh, so, my God. I'm going to cry <laughs> even talking about right, Lion King. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, you you and I relate to the same for that film. Like that is still my top tier, but also too, it kind of really like made me look at cinema in a yeah. very different light. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh my god, that's my first memory seeing that film. Um, seeing that, that, that film was my now. first big one movie too. Get lost. Oh my god. Yeah, I was in the cinema and and I must have been four years old or something like that. And I just remember, I think we were quite close to the screen, and I was looking up and I was just absolutely blown away by what i was watching you know um the colors and everything like that and i and i agree with you lion king is still top tier for me um you know it's it, of course it's it's based off hamlet and it's based off a yes. few different things as well but the execution of it um and how everything's brought together i think it is a masterpiece in animation you know absolutely i fully agree with you and if anyone ever asks me what movie you want to watch on did lion king did you both <laughs> lion king all right uh, <laughs> please like yes it. I mean, you need to bring tissues with you, Ron. I'm not going to lie because you know the scene I'm talking about. Um, but oh, 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 still gets me every single time. Every single time, absolutely. But, but you see, like with your growth with that, because like you said before, that you wanted to know more from like the backside of film. You know, you wanted yeah. to know the actors. Everything was made. That really caught your eye. You know, and a lot of kids around your age don't think that way you know yeah. like that's not something people will go out their way to really find like why did for yourself did you want to uh, i think i was trying to figure out why 
why do these these films and TV and entertainment why do they have such a massive effect on me? Because they do, you know, um, and uh, they still do to this day. And like I said, I think when you're a kid, especially, there's film and TV that are teaching you things. You know, I mean, what's great about having a great uh, support system around you, which is what I what I have with family and friends and everything, is that you learn a lot from other people. But you learn a lot from what you watch, and you, if you're taking a lot of entertainment in. Um, you're learning a lot of different themes and um, important stuff from that, you know, really. So I was like, you know, what, why am I drawn to the actors? Why am I drawn, drawn to the stories and stuff like that? And I thought it must be what these actors are bringing to it. And, you know, I didn't, I wouldn't say as a kid, I looked at acting and thought, oh, that's a good performance. That's a bad performance. Again, I just saw the characters, but right. I knew that the actors were bringing those characters to life. And those characters were having a big impact on me so I thought if I can you know if I ever have the chance to to make people feel something by doing what these actors are doing I mean I'd be on cloud nine you know and and that's kind of how it's worked out is that when I get feedback good or bad about um, something I've done to have any sort of impact on someone or to affect them emotionally or anything like that is is bliss to me man honestly it is the prime reason why I do it I mean in college, I did this scene, which was quite an emotional scene, and um, one of my my course mates came up to me and and she was like, "I hate you," and I was like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> and 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 she walked. Uh, it was it was um, she walked into the light because we set up the light in for the scene. It was like a theater thing, um, and she walked into the light and she was crying, and I was like, "God," you know, and she was like, "This is your fault," and she meant she was obviously meaning oh, the positive way, right? And, um that for me was like I almost choked up myself because I was like god this is like childhood dream stuff of just effect just affecting even even if it's one person run you know let alone a lot of people it's just something I've always really wanted to do because again I think it's what um the actors and the filmmakers did for me as a kid and what they've done for me since if I can at all do that for other people man that's pretty cool you know that's deep, man. Deep. Yeah. Well, that's that's very, very. I can see, I can see how much like this means to you. But, yeah. but as as much as it means to you, at first, like you said prior, you were going to be a game designer. Yeah. So, what was there the fear of like, am I making the right decision? Like, maybe I should just stick with this. It was, uh, yeah, there was a bit of a fear there because I think with games, games design is not easy at all to get into no. either, really. Um, I mean, any art form is is quite tough, you know, and I don't, I would never say I had, I had a passion for games design. I wouldn't say I had, looking back, I had the real talent for it, um, because obviously you've got to be incredibly good at drawing and creatively in that sense. But um, switching, I think there was a moment when I was still in between the two. So it was like acting, acting's going really cool um, and going really well. And it seems to be a natural thing for it. But I was still in between games design. And I think there was, uh, it was the same lecturer who actually, um, and I'll, I'll, na- I'll name him, I haven't seen him for years, Chris Jones, um, mm-hmm. the, the guy who, who suggested the drama thing for me. He actually, we had a parents evening um, and it was me and my dad sitting down with him. And it was about a few months after I joined the drama thing as well, because I was doing both courses at the same time. And he he just said to my dad, he said, I I think we've lost Ross to drama. And, um, (laughs) (laughs) and, you know, and and I was sitting there and I was just thinking, yeah, yeah, you should sort of have to be honest, you know, I I think that was a point where it was like, and fear wise, um, because obviously I have chosen one of the hardest uh, professions to stable, have a stable uh, stance on, right? It's not easy. Um, Oh God, no, not easy at all. But I'll be, I'll be honest here, Ron. It's like, I, I self-esteem wise, and again, if we are going to get deep, self-esteem wise, I still have some issues at times. But acting wise, I know that I will always need to improve. I know I've got a lot of ways to go. I know there's a lot of areas I can improve on. But I, I've always known I can do this ever since I started it. Really, um, uh, to a, to at least um. An, an adequate level hopefully get into high levels as i can go so fear wise there's never really been um a fear of like oh what, what if this doesn't happen because beyond to be honest with you i will never stop going for this like i will won't 
at all and and that's that's a very easy thing to say um and a harder thing to do but i've been doing it for about uh 11 years now and i've always kind of had that mantra really so the fear thing is not really there in performing and stuff at all really to be honest see see that right there because you know you know for anything whatever we do the fear will always be there because like that we are our own worst critics But, but like you just said that your passion overthrides that like it's just yeah you love doing it and that's the most important thing if you whatever you do you have to love it if you don't love it then why am i doing this exactly exactly and the foundation the foundation for yourself is already there but also i need i would love to ask you you know with that while we it's great for us to believe in ourselves we also it is also good to have the people around us to keep us up whenever we can't carry our, ourselves at times so yeah. was your family also on your side or did it take them a while to really get on board oh no they, they were they've they've been really supportive to be fair and um i think it's been hard at times to grasp it because with um going for a career that's so um hard hard to get like this in some ways uh, there's a lot of sacrifices that have to come you know okay. um and whether they be personal professional there's a lot of sacrifices that have had uh, have happened um and my parents and my family in general and again my, my friends around me have been so supportive because i think what i just mentioned to you the fact that i said i i you know i can't see myself doing anything else um that that's easy to hear once from people and may go oh yeah okay ross you know yeah that's cool and everything but i think since i've had such drive with it people have been like oh he, he means it so um I think the support comes with that in the way that they know that Ross will never stop doing this and um, we, we, you know, we will be supporting him throughout the way. And, um, you know, people are honest with me, Ron, like the people around me, if I've done something not too great, they'll be like, yeah, you, you need to do better than that. You know, and, and I, I love that. that, 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 that love that's that. very important. Absolutely. I mean, constructive uh, criticism for me is is great. I mean, I, I hate when people say things, oh, that's crap. And then you go, why is it crap? And they go, oh, I don't know. <laughs> exactly. No, exactly. Like, if you're gonna critique like, something. Tell me abs- why. Of course, absolutely. So, so they can be worked on and improved and stuff like that. Really. And oh my god, you talk about you said about being our worst enemy and stuff like that. I, I, it's a funny thing with something I've done. Right. I will watch it once because the way I see it, I'm not the only person that's been involved with that project. Other people have done it, and I want to see their work, and I want to see what it is as a piece, whether it be a film or a music video or whatever. And then I'll watch it one more time and go, okay, I didn't like that. I didn't like what I did there. I didn't like what I did there. I need to move on that. I need to move on that. And um, I will watch myself twice um, when I'm doing something. Um, Because I'm not a fan of watching myself too much, but I will do it so that I feel like, oh, mate, you've got a great voice. You should love listening to it. (laughs) It's cringe Um, every time. I completely (laughs) understand. It's one of those things, you know, like I'm sure when, when I listen to this back, if I, if, you know, if I can deal with listening to myself back uh, i'll be like is that what my voice sounds like you know <laughs> but yeah yeah it's 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 in that regard is it's just yeah the support system has been amazing um and i think it's a hard thing um creative arts to to put a grasp on it because people who are not in it don't really they've heard of the sacrifices but they don't really understand the specific sacrifices there are which is fair enough because again they're not in that um profession right. Um, but to be fair, the people around me have been so understanding of it. So I kind of, I kind of no complaints in that regard, really. Are there any actors or actresses that really, that you look at and you're like, I want my craft to be around the way they are, or they inspire you with the way they work? Yes. Um, I will probably be here for 10 years with me listing these off. So I'll try and keep it short. (laughs) Um, my, oh, Right. I'm going to ask you the same question. Yeah, I'm going to flip this as well. My oh. favorite. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, this is what flipping it, mate. The, my oh, favorite. Man, actor, right. Okay. Oh, it's <laughs> in between two. And they're for two different reasons. My favorite actor is Gary Oldman. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. And the reason um, why that is, is that he is a goddamn chameleon. Like you, the the range of roles that he's done, you know, he's played Churchill, he's played a corrupt cop. Um, yeah. uh, Sirius Black, you know, uh, uh, Commissioner Gordon, all these things. And yes. it's not just the fact that these are such different characters, but 
the skill, the intensity, and everything he brings them is just uh, off the scale for me, really. And he he came up with a great quote that I heard, which is someone said to him in an interview a few years ago, where they said, "Oh, so Gary, what's it like to be like at the top of your craft?" Um, and he just went, right, "What are you talking about? I'm still learning." And if Gary Oldman saying that, <laughs> I think we should wow. all we should all have that mantra, really. Um, and the other person's DiCaprio, like Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh- Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I have such respect for him because you know he did Titanic, and people forget, right, Ron? I don't know if you've seen. I don't know if you've seen Titanic or the last time you saw it. He's good in Titanic. I know he is he like is. the man, and he's the he's the pretty boy and stuff like that, right? But he, it's a really good performance, and he could have gone down rom coms route. He could have done. People were expecting that because of the response he had from Titanic, and he was just like, no. That's not me. That's not me as an actor. I want to do these interesting films. And his choice in film, like, there's, over the last 15 years, DiCaprio, like, the films he's brought out, I mean, you can list them, and they range from good to brilliant, in my opinion, you know? And he always brings this intensity to him. I think he's got, like, a natural, amazing screen presence. And um, and he's not afraid to take risks as well, like, you know? But my the flip question here now... Is who is yours? Oh man, look at this! I I came in trying to interview this guy, that. and Ross came in with a left hook and be like, "Ron, I got you." <laughs> okay, all right, I'm ready for this. Okay, it's good. All right, okay. fine. Um, I've always been stuck on two people, right? Um, and it goes James Earl Jones. Nice. And voice. voice. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Oh man, like oh, again, if we go back. Lion King. Like his voice stuck oh. with me. Like. Yeah. It it come and the way his range, because it's really where I rewatch it as a you know as an adult and just seeing how he goes from being you know very calm, very collective, and being angry, but also being that fatherly figure of just yes. comfort. And the other actor, while people might look like, oh, of course you picked him because he was in that movie you like. It was after this movie that I really wanted to follow his career. And then I was like, man, this guy's amazing. Uh, Christian Bale. Oh, yes. Nice one. Like, the Dark Knight, of course, introduced me to him. The Batman Begins, yeah. Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises. But it's everything after that he is such... He will go in places that I've never seen other actors do. And yeah, I know it's a weird thing, because, again, he is Batman. But he, Christian Bale, is, it's underrated sometimes how good he is. You know? Yes. Like, um, because people think, oh, you know, Batman voice and all that, and it's like, yeah, and I, I think he was great as as Batman and Bruce Wayne, to be honest. But like, you watch him in like the Fighter, and oh, uh, that's my movie. You know? Oh, he's so good, and and I'm I'm watching it this week or next week, Ford versus Ferrari. I can't wait to see that with him and Matt Damon it's, as well. It's a it's a good watch. Like, I, I, oh he, yeah, he, you again, I did a great job. He, oh man, Ross, he did a phenomenal job. Him and Matt Damon, like, you, you feel like they, they, they've been friends forever. He's so good. He just disappears into roles and stuff. And God, the the physically what he does to get into roles. That's what I mean. Oh my oh, God! Like, I mean, not, not that people would do what he he does just to get into the role. The dedication and stuff. The, I mean, I am. I still haven't seen the Machinist yet. You know where he's incredibly thin. Yes. Um, and and yes. it's scary. You know. But like, I think the next role for him was Batman Begins, and it's like, how how would you go from like? that thin to bulking up i think it was within like five or six months it's like how how would you do that, that? it's insane that's a killer on the body i'm like god oh. <laughs> i don't know I, I, I would do that yeah yeah but again i think dicaprio and bale they both have a great intensity to them you know like absolutely like those two actors like intense performances is what i get from them um, and uh, and yeah, uh, Christian Bale, and like you said with James Earl Jones, I mean that voice, and I know he's prim- predominantly known for his voice, but as you know yourself, voice acting is a skill, man. And like, it's there's not so easy, man. It's, it's, it, oh, it takes God. a lot to, especially care for their voice because they're not seeing your face; they're just, they're hearing oh. you. So there's there's more story storytelling you need need to get across how will you use your voice, you know? And um, it, I mean, he's moved faster than he's Darth Vader. That should be enough. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Nothing else. You know? Um, but, yeah, what he, he's just got an amazing presence and stuff like that. And, yeah. Yeah, good choices, mate. You did. I flipped the script and you did it well. You did it well. 
Oh man, on my toes, but yeah, I think I, I think I found a way. <laughs> And of course, I'm speaking with Ross Leishan. Don't forget to follow him on Instagram at Ross Leish and watch his new film, Anhedonia, on Amazon Prime. Anhedonia, only on Amazon Prime. Mr. Ross, we got to talk about your film set, okay? Because this filmography, guys, it's pretty, it's pretty long, all right? So, Mr. Ross, are you ready just to talk, go, go down memory lane on some of these films before we go to the big, the big one? I'm not ready at all, but let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not here. We come. We you got know. it. We got it. 2016, Sunnyside. Sunnyside. Oh, Sunnyside. Yeah. 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 So it was a short film, and it was about this guy who it seems like he's kind of losing his mind, and, and he, he hears about this name, and he kind of, this name um, is kind of seen as like a joke and stuff like that, and it's kind of this comedy throughout. And then at the end, um, basically, spoilers, um, at the end, uh, there's, uh, you know, he's still joking about about this name and he meets this guy that comes into the office and he's joking about with him and he says, that's not your name. And it actually is the name of the guy. And I play that guy. So I was just literally cast to kind of be the um, the end of the joke that the whole film set up. So that was a really interesting role. Yeah, absolutely. Was that was, was that your first uh, big 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 open role? That was um, that was a short film, two thousand sixteen, uh, uh, three years ago. That was, I think, around about the fourth or fifth short film I'd done. I think, I think at that point, maybe maybe sixth or seventh. I've done I've done a, I've done a few um, student films and stuff as well um, years ago, and um, that was probably maybe the first professional short film I did. Yeah, thinking about it. So yeah. on a scale of one to ten, how nervous were you do for the whole process? Um, I was uh, again because I I think one of the la- I, my scene was one of the last things they shot, so right. I was pretty nervous because even though it was such a small role and I was I was probably on screen for about a minute, it was a small but important role, and because this joke had been set up for the whole film and you know I read that in the script and everything like that, I was like, oh, I need to like deliver this well. You know, because like if if I don't deliver this well, this the uh, dialogue for this joke in some ways, it's gonna kind of make the film be a bit flat. And everything that these guys have done to set it up, um, I I kind of undone it. So I was a little bit nervous for that one, more than you would think for like a small role like that. Really, yeah. I w- I wouldn't be surprised if I was in your shoes. I'd probably be sweating my my armpits <laughs> like crazy. <laughs> now, oh this- god. I've never, I've never got to the sweat point with uh, with, with <laughs> news yet. I know, that will be the one of like, oh, wow, wow this means a lot, you know. <laughs> the second one is Dreamers. Dreamers, yeah, Dreamers. 2017, is that right? 2017. I should know this, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was there, don't worry. I, I was like, actually, actually there. like, Ross, you should know. Come on, you got to tell me. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, Dreamers was great. Uh, Dreamers was um, a professional short film as well. And I I auditioned for this one. So the other one I kind of got through Sunnyside, people had recommended me for it. People had worked with me before. Um, Dreamers was an audition and it was a pretty big audition process. So Dreamers is basically about a man who uh, he's uh, at a cliffside and he's an actor. And um, he's struggling. He's a struggling actor and he's uh, struggling with depression as well. And he's just sitting on this bench and he kind of he gets visited from his best friend. And um, they, they have this really deep conversation about how, it, funnily enough, it's pretty similar to what we were talking about earlier, about how, how, you, how if he can stick it as an actor or if he can keep doing these nine to five jobs and everything like that to support himself when he's just feeling creatively frustrated and he doesn't know if he can actually do it. So you can imagine any actor um, in, in, a, in a script like this, in a film like this, is pretty close to home, you know. So I played his best friend and I auditioned for it and stuff like that. And I worked with, um, for the first time and not for the last, because I've kind of de- developed a relationship with this company. I've, I worked with Cinemus. Um, and Cinemus uh, helped produce this film, and it was Sonny Dillon 
who was the uh, lead actor and the uh, the director of this film as well. And um, Sonny did a great job writing this um, with with Rhiannon. And um, yeah, it was a really deep, profound film. And uh, a lot of people say, you know, like they they really appreciate what he was saying in that film and everything like that. So my character was basically a support system for him in that, telling him that you just got to keep going for it. You just got to, you can't give up. And again, it was very close for close to home for me because that's exactly how I feel about actors in general. And, and any, like you said, right at the start, Ron, like if you're passionate about something, if you love doing it, don't ever think at some point that it's not working at that current time that it won't work in the future. Just keep just keep at it, you know, completely. And no, um, it's true. Yeah, yeah. And and Dreamers, Dreamers was great. Dreamers was a beautiful film, and I'm really proud of that one. Yeah, absolutely. So for that role, then was it like that more easier for you to like just get get lost in it because, as you said, that it related so much to the way the way you feel. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was. Um, we had a rehearsal beforehand as well, which I really really thought was uh, helpful for the process and everything. And yeah, I think, like you say, especially auditioning for the role, um, I learned the lines and then it was like, right, the emotion is just going to come from me with this one because this is pretty much how I feel about it all. So it was easier in a way, but I think what's always interesting with acting is that when something's really close to you, it's great in a sense that you can just let yourself go. But you kind of go into, you kind of go into yourself and you can kind of go into maybe some dark places you haven't been to in a while or some places that make you a bit sad, like emotional recall type thing. Um, And uh, you can kind of recall emotions to bring this performance out and they can be emotions that hurt a bit. But with that film, it was kind of a mixture of the two of like, oh, this is easy, but the, I'm I'm feeling a lot of stuff personally, which is great because as long as that gives it for the performance, that's all that matters, really. But now the one that we've been building up towards, and it's time to talk about it, the one movie that I couldn't go anywhere without Stardust bringing it up, hyping <laughs> it up, and I was like, all right, let's hear about it, Anhedonia. I'm so impressed you pronounced that right. Honestly, you 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 need to sell yourself more, mate. Because that how <laughs> how you can pronounce that with me even trying to tell you what it is. I'm pretty impressed with that. To be fair, I broke that down like five ten times. So <laughs> I got hit a home run. <laughs> I've heard every different pronunciation for that word. It's brilliant. I love it. Now tell us the now tell us for this because you were like going so much about it to the point that finally. It actually became a film on yeah. the app. Yeah, I know. I know it's crazy. Um, like it obviously with Stardust, you know, you, you get the thumbnails of the posters and stuff like that. And um, I have to give a massive shout out to um, uh, well, a man you know quite well as well, with Jackson Hendricks. Um, exactly, yeah. and he he's a Stardust, and he's brilliant, and he's this young filmmaker, and his passion, and I can go on about him all day. He's an amazing guy. And um, he kind of suggested to me, he was like, listen, you need to get that um, that thumbnail and you need to get Anadonia onto the Stardust app. And he kind of helped me um, suggest ways to do it. And then to finally see the poster there and, you know, to have, to have people actually reacting to it and people reviewing it, um, it's mad. Like, it's, it's an amazing feeling um, to be involved with something like that. And with Stardust as well, it's surreal because... I think I've done probably about 200, 250 reactions. And to have <laughs> to have the film I'm in um, and the film I'm the main villain in be one of those is just, uh, it, I, I can't, that does not compute, Ron, you know, does not. <laughs> so, and, you know, it's directed and written by, I won't say his name right, Michael Henry. Yep, absolutely. And a, f- a fact about the movie was each member of the crew can be seen as an extra at some point in the movie. That's right. Yep. That's, that's, that, that, that's called real dedication. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, is, wow. Multi-talented people at our film, let me tell you. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was I did, I wasn't obviously in every scene of the film. Right. Um, and it, oh, it, man. Was, it was brilliant watching the film and like being like, is that, is that Julie? Is that, you know, like, oh, is that, you know, and I was like, oh my God, he's used the, cr- brilliant. Absolutely amazing. Loved it. Now, Tell us about this movie, though. Like, where did you hear the audition? 
and the process for you to get the role and everything else that was, you know, the building point to finally getting released. Yeah. So, right. I, Richard, Richard Militiadis, who is, um, who plays a role in the film. Um, he plays proxy yes. and I would try and, I would try and explain his character. Char- I should say, as, as you know, Ron, Anadonia is a surreal film. You know, oh, it is. Was it ever? Out there, you know, and proxy, um, his character, um, you, you've seen the film, yeah? Yes, I did. Yeah, um, you know the character that keeps on popping up, um, dark hair, blue eyes, um, and he's like the barman. Yes. He's, yeah, and he and you're like, why is why is this the same man each time? He um he's a great friend of mine, and he told me he said, listen, Ross, um, I'm in a film co- um currently in pre production, and um the main villain for the film, he said the actors had to back out because of scheduling conflicts. I've told I told uh, Michael about you, and I've shown him some stuff, and he would like you to audition for the role. And I, obviously, to be the main villain in a feature film, I jumped at it without even asking him what the project was about. Um, and um, you know, I did the audition with Michael, and it was this really, really creepy scene. And and I think creepy is a word we're going to use a lot, Ron, in this conversation. <laughs> for all this movie, I am not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> and um you know i i and and i i could not read michael you know I, I with auditions um i i think sometimes it's hard to read people right and I, and i was like i don't know i don't know and i and i got home and and um i think maybe a few hours later or maybe the next day he he messaged me and said you got it and i was like wow you know it was a great feeling and um a few months afterwards we shot uh we shot the film and it was just this surreal uh, surreal is another word that comes up a lot with this film Ron. oh uh, gosh but, but it was this amazing you know the, uh, being on a set and being with um crew and cast alike who uh, who want to be there just as much as you do um there's such a positivity no matter what kind of film it is you know because it's just passion that's the whole atmosphere is just passion and um it was an it was an amazing experience and it taught me loads and it is the 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 biggest project I've done so far in my career and it's opened a lot of doors you know and uh, I am I'm so thankful to uh, to Richard um, first of all for suggesting for me and all the cast and crew and Michael of course and um, it was an amazing experience and pre production post production and now with the with the release it's all been. Uh, childhood dream come true honestly without getting cheesy absolutely it's been amazing now, now like you said you know this was probably the biggest thing you've done so far yeah so for did you feel a lot of pressure like not only for yourself but like for everyone else that like, everyone had to bring their a game for this thing to be a hit it was yeah. I, I felt I I didn't I felt a bit of news, but as as you I'm sure you'd agree, news can be good, you know, because yes. news is like I want this, you know. Right. Um. And I we me and Michael talked about the character a bit, and he mentioned a film, um, which is kind of in, kind of influences Anadonia a bit is No Country for Old Men, and I, I yep. love that film. And you know, he said, well, as soon as he said that, I was like, oh, please tell me that he wants this villain to be even a little bit similar to um, Anton Chigou, who, which is uh, which is Javier Bardem's villain in No Country for Old Men, because I think that is one of the best villain performances there's ever been. He is terrifying in that film, and like any time he's on screen, it's like, oh, this film changes. Oh, the oh, you know, stuff's going down. Let's say, you know. And he really wanted that sort of element for the film um, in my character, which is the Philistine. And I think, again, the passion helped me out because the passion got rid of the nerves. And I was like, no, I can do this. And I I, I want I want to, uh, if he wants to creep people out with his character, you are going to get the best creep you've ever seen. <laughs> you know, which is the best thing because I... To be seen as like a creep and stuff like that um, is a pretty weird experience because I think people see the film and then they talk to me for the first time and go, "Oh, you, you're you're not a serial killer. Wow, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. Um, but see, that's a great compliment. You know, it's, it's a cool funny compliment. you said that. It's funny that you brought that up because and again, people on Stardust of what I've known for Ross, he he comes up as the most the most 
calmest, nicest people that you can think about, right? Oh, thanks. But, but that role, man, you, and, and I say this with the utmost respect, like you were lost in that. Like yeah. I, you were terrifying. You were disturbing. Oh, and I'm like, <laughs> this, this can't be the same Ross. Like he is just an evil, evil jerk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It's, it's 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 like one of those characters that's so different to myself in every way. It was just a blast to play. Like you know, it was so cool to play. Um, but yeah, he is. Oh, I mean, pretty pretty gross. He's a pretty gross, creepy character, you know, and um, dangerous to say the least. And uh, and again, he's he's a philistine, so he hate, he hates anything artistic. And right. I I knew that. Right for me. Um, that's completely against my being. So I know what I would hate. So I was like, right, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do exactly what I would hate. And that's kind of what came out with the character, really. But no, thank you so much for the for the feedback for that, man, honestly. Oh, look, again, when you, when you know somebody and you see them act different and you, <laughs> it takes you back, like, you're like, wow. No, yeah. Ross is good. <laughs> no, no, okay, I get it. I, I get why you're an actor. Okay. <laughs> <Really understandable. laughs> And um, the the first scene we shot uh, out of interest, right, is um, the first day on set I had. Um, you know the scene with um, me and uh, and Helen's the actress, and it's me and her sat down, uh, bet- uh, sat across from each other, and it's it's Kino's the main character's uh, wife, mm-hmm. and um, and the moment where you know we're just sitting there and we're sitting across from each other, and you can tell he's really intrigued by her, and he's just like, oh, I'm gonna have to tie you up though. That was the yeah. first scene we got. So that was the first scene. So that was me being like, right, from now on, whatever I do in this scene, there needs to be elements of this in every other part of the film, you know. Um, so that scene was really important for me. And it was just this creepy, you know, uh, oh, it's terrifying, terrifying. Um, it was really cool to do. And, of course, I'm speaking with Ross Leeshin. Talking about Anh- Anhedonia. Now, I know that there was definitely, like, the process to get this thing going. Cause I remember that you had put this on I- Indiegogo. Yeah. Was yeah. there, a- was there like any doubt for yourself or, or everybody else to be like, I don't think this will get like pushed out. I don't think people are going to want to put money on this. It was, uh, I think, and, I, and again, you've watched the film. I think it's fair to say the film is not for everyone, right? The film is exactly. a very acquired taste. It is yes. out there. You know, it is completely out there. It's very interpretive. Um, slow that's burn. My, yeah, it is, oh, so it's very slow burn. And and what it's great if you're into art house films, it's great as a rewatch because there's so many themes going on that you may not be aware of. And if you're willing to come back, you will definitely be rewarded with it, you know. Um, but with a film like this, it's art house that's surreal. Um, it's hard to sell to people um, in some ways, you know. Um, and... It, there was a bit of nerves there because this the script was so out there, the story was so out there. But again, it was good. The execution was good. It was shot well. The music is brilliant. I think uh, Michael's direction is really great, and the acting is great as well. That it was like, oh, if we can get some sort of marketing stra- strategy for this and get people to watch it, there is. While it's an acquired taste, there's certainly an audience for this film. You know, um, so. There were definitely nerves as far as marketing it and for the Indiegogo building and finishing the film in some ways, but we we got it, you know. And um, and that moment when Michael messaged me and he was like, "Oh, it's being processed on Amazon Prime," I was just like, "You you we we had talks about that and there, and it was it was like, oh, this this that that would be cool, you know, but you don't think about it on and and it doesn't right. hit you." And um, when it when it, when you see the film on Amazon Prime, and you know, and I got I got the first screenshot of it. I was just like, God, that is. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling, man. I, it, 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 it's that wow, it's here. It's here, yeah, absolutely. Because it was in the festival circuit for a long time. Because as, as you probably know, film films um, they're in film festivals. They're not available to the public for a long time. So right. um, we had it in film festivals for about ten. Or 11 months i think and um to actually have the public be able to see it now is just crazy and again the feedback has been 
while while it hasn't been everybody's type of film, I don't think people have um, people have really praised the filmmaking, and people have really praised um, the acting and the music and everything like that. And people say whether they whether it's their film or not, people say I'm interested by it, and that's a big thing. You know, even if you, even if it's an acquired taste, to have people interested is a really cool thing. And and fair play to Michael for creating a film which you know really says a lot and it's what you want to bring to the film as well um because it's very interpretive and um yeah he's he did an amazing job with the film he really did along with everybody else that worked on it so with now the i'll say success of the film because look anyone who puts a movie out it's a success okay because sometimes some movies don't see the light of day so yeah that that's a big win right there yeah, but for the success of the film, for you, can you take the film as the learning experience of how it felt to be in like a in a big time for yourself, a big time film? One hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it it was a definitely a learning experience for me, and you know, it was the, it was the biggest crew I've worked with, so I I've never really worked with. Um, a team that big so performing in front of that many people on a screen thing i've done theater of course which is a bigger audience but like having a big crew like that it was just such a great experience because you work in long hours with these people around so like you're gonna get right. close to these people and it's really cool in that sense you know um and learning wise you know the first film i've done i played the main villain which is scary um you're thinking about it you know and and it never really hit me until afterwards but I know now that right, you know. I I look at that performance in Anadonia, and, and I am I am you know quite proud of it. But there are elements of it where I'm like, oh, I could have done that better. I could have done that better. I could have done that better. And next time round, um, I really want to do those things better. You know. So, um, I think it's just not losing momentum and get, carrying on the momentum of this film so that I can get other projects to sink my teeth into. Um, and yeah, yeah, on that century. Man, and if anyone, if any of you guys would want to check it out for yourselves, Anhedonia is on Amazon Prime. Look, come on, y'all ain't that hard to find. Go on that Amazon Prime. You probably have it. Go on it, get on that, and check it out. Because if I tell you Ross is that guy, man, <laughs> get lost in that world. Because he yeah. gives it his all. Man. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool. It was a really cool experience. Oh, thank you for that, man. Oh, look. I as you know, this is about you. We got to get real. And this is what I do, man. Come on now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the last one up on my list here is The Midnight Court and Other az- az- Azaleans. Am I saying that oh, right? Oh, you do well. You do. I, I'll be honest, Ron. I had no idea how to pronounce this one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, oh, it's, man. Practice it's it's Irish. It's, it's Irish. So it's The Midnight Court and Other Ashlands. So again, I you would I would never have thought it was Ashlands, but yeah, it's uh, Ashlands that final word, and that was um, that. What's crazy about this one is that um, you know I did loads of student films years ago, and this was a student film, right? But it was an overachiever um, because the job that these guys did on on this film, it was just this is a professional short film, but done with student with a student budget or student equipment or whatever right you know um because the things that these guys did with this film and um alexandros matai is actually uh the director of this one and i worked with him on anadonia so um that was a great way yeah yeah so uh, again contacts can be so important because because i worked with um alexandros on that he was like oh i want you to work on a film i have in i have in mind so it was on the Irish Rebellion um, hundreds of years ago, and it's about this girl who is this really strong female character, and um, her kind of actions and some of the things going on around her kind of cause or start this rebellion. Um, and the the research that these guys did into Irish history, um, the we what we did for this is that we went to um we went to this like village that was like a historical reenactment type village if you know mm-hmm. um and it was done like um like it was hundreds of years ago and that was our set so it was this like outdoors set that was you know true to life what these people would have lived like 
and we had like lunch and catering in these like little cottages and like we were filming around that village for the whole week it was incredible it was such an amazing experience and um and uh with that as well um yeah the the film the film's done really well it's incredibly well shot um the music is beautiful it's got amazing direction the the performances in it are incredible um and that was uh what what was really cool with that is that we actually had a screening in athens which was just surreal um so the only person out of the whole cast and crew that hadn't seen the film um was me so that i was watching oh. I was, yeah, yeah, it was just this surreal experience of, like, I travelled to Athens in Greece, um, and we were in the cinema in Athens, and we we sat down with an audience of a few hundred people, and I sat down there, and I was like, I'm literally watching a film that I've been in for the first time in a screening in Athens, and it was just one of these pinch pinch yourself moments, and it was absolutely amazing. Oh, it was so cool. And I feel like, th- th- for you, it's, it's another, like, milestone you know like yeah. now you, you you get to experience what a lot of other actors get to experience sometimes when they watch themselves for the first time yeah 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 absolutely and and they did an amazing job and they had like this um the soundtrack um was done by um Orestes Lazarou and he did this amazing soundtrack and what was really cool before the film started is that he and Alexandros and um this amazing string player actually performed the soundtrack before the film started live and that was uh that was really cool and now i mean looking at all your your films you know all your your history so far and the stuff you've done can you see the the steps you've taken and step back to yourself and look like man i've really improved i've really grown and i'm only going to get better from this like have you stopped yourself to smell the roses (laughs) <laughs> I yes and no it, it, to be honest it's like again I I work I work I, I should say I work a full-time uh, job as well as acting because again you need to finance yourself for when the other jobs aren't there right. and that can be quite hard as far as balance goes and and cre- you can get a bit creatively frustrated with it and you know I, I I saw this amazing like piece of art the other day and it was a girl like she was halfway up this mountain And she's looking up, right? And it's this really tall peak. And she's climbed loads anyway. And she looks up at this tall peak and she goes, wow. And then right next to it is exactly the same piece of art. And it's her looking down from what she's climbed up. And she's looking down from the peak. And she goes, wow. And it's basically her saying, okay, I've got to climb all this. But hang on. Look at what I've achieved. And I, and I, I thought about it. I thought about myself with it. And I was like, I, you know, I, I've, I sometimes forget the stuff I've done is really cool. And, you know, I've been really lucky in the contacts that I've had and the networking and um, all the talented actors, directors, crew I've worked with and, and the support system I've got. I'm very lucky in that sense. And the stuff I've achieved, you know, um, I, I, I think when you're so driven, it is hard to stop and smell the roses sometimes because I'm just thinking about the next project. But Again, being the main villain in a feature film, it goes back to when I was a kid and like just having just being in a project or being in something or a piece of art that makes people feel something and being such an integral part of that. I, I, I don't think about it enough, really. Um, and I should because it, it probably improves self-esteem and stuff like that and would give me even more drive to get more of that stuff in the future, you know. And of course, I'm speaking with Ross Leeshin. And like you said before, and I don't think a lot of people get it, because you, you just brought it up saying that you need to do, when you, when you don't have the acting job, when it's not there at the time, you got to eat, you got to pay your bills, yep. <laughs> you got to you gotta work, you know? Yeah. So you got to hustle. You got to hustle. You got to do what you got to do to live. So yep. I say that, because that's the that's the fact of life. It is the truth. But, it is the truth. Pr- truth that people don't want to talk about a lot, but unfortunately, it is the truth. You know. Okay, and if, okay, it's perfect that you said that because that's where I'm I'm going to with you is that, you know, people that look at actors, all they see is the glitz, the glamour, yeah. you know, all everything they see on TMZ, of course. But 
when what could you say to people that don't understand the real work it takes to be an actor for the everyday life of it yeah i mean i I can't knock people that aren't in it because it's a very hard thing to grasp the sacrifices if you're not in that world in some ways but like i think what people say a lot is with acting with voice acting with a lot of different art forms um it's about luck it's about contacts which is true but what, uh, one thing that people always leave out, I think, and I think you'll agree with me, Aaron, is finance. Um, yes. It takes a lot of money to set up a career in the arts. Um, oh. And that may, you know, I'm sure for yourself, like equipment that you may need to use um, and just travel into auditions, um, joining um, certain things to do with acting and performing and everything like that. It costs it costs a lot of money. Headshots. Um, I, I <laughs> Oh my God, Ron! I mean, I, I've um, I've had headshots that are like near, you know, four hundred, five hundred pound or something like that, you know, and that's seen as the norm. That's seen as the average, um, and they're incredibly well done, and that's great. But I think people, I'd love for people to realize more that actors are working two careers. They've got the nine to five. And actors is too broad. Sorry, people doing any artistic form or entertainment, they are doing a full time job to do the full-time job they want to do. And even that's not guaranteed. So that's hard. That's really, you know, um, and I've, I, I'll be, I'd be lying if I said at times I haven't struggled with, um, you know, being kind of stuck in the nine to five job. Uh, and it's not knocking nine to five jobs to people well, at all. It's just not for me. It's just personally not for me, you know, um, cause acting is the thing I need to do. Right. And, um, it's it's at, it's at times where I felt trapped at times, you know, and I need to really creatively get something going. But I think, yeah, I I can't really tell uh, tell people how to feel or anything like that. I just wish there was a bit more understanding that there's a lot of sacrifice if you want to get into an entertainment or art form, and the people who are really driven for it, they do sacrifice a lot, and there should be a bit of understanding there from time to time. But again it's hard to grasp that if you're not feeling it firsthand. I don't know if you agree with that. And have you, have you yourself had any of those um, instances yourself on that regard? Man, every time. Cause you know, when you feel that you belong, you, you, you know what you're good at. I'll say like, yeah, you know what you're good at and you know what your passion is. Like it's different when you go to work and, you know, you're just getting by because, look, I need to get a paycheck. That's what I need. I yeah. need this so I can live to see the next day. But when I'm home and I'm working on, like, for me, when I do my voiceover stuff, when I interview all of you great people, you know, I'm alive. When I go out other yeah. places and I interview people, you know, I feel like this is where I belong. This is this yeah. is the road I des- I need to be here because this is where I give my 110%. You know, Absolutely. it's not work to me. And, and yeah, there's a lot of yes, other stuff on the exactly. side. It's not work. <laughs> you don't see it as work. That's right. People do. Like, people see what you're doing. Like, oh, that seems like a lot of work. Not to me. Oh. I love it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's bang and, on, man. And people don't, I always say this, it, it, it's more that people don't know or they don't want to know. And that's okay. Yeah. Because you know, yeah. some people just won't get it. Yeah. With that too, because also you know social media is a big thing too. You know, yes. with also with networking, and I, I know you've seen the way how fans act with movies that they don't like, or yep. in the, you know roles they go to and they hate the actors. I'm not talking about just like giving a group critique of an actor. They say they venomously hate them. Like they will go out and tag these people and say how much they hate them for for a performance, and you're like, but I I didn't make the movie. Like yes. I just do my job, but they they blame you. Like you ruined my movie. Absolutely. I mean, so Jar Jar Binks. I mean, you know, I think Jar Jar Binks. I don't know if you've heard about Ahmed Best or anything like that. Who played Jar Jar Binks in um, the Phantom Menace episode one, Star Wars? Um, but oh, obviously, yeah. that character and <laughs> and just my opinion, that character Go in ahead. that film, not great. <laughs> With not the well, that's the truth. <laughs> um, but. Like he for years, man, he got destroyed by people. I mean, he got death threats. He got 
abuse, right? And it led to him, and there's a great YouTube video, which is a very emotionally powerful YouTube video, and it's him, it's him describing um, nearly committing suicide on a bridge and um, how he thought about his son, and that saved his life in that regard. But the thing that caused him to get to that stage was having years and years of abuse from Star Wars fans. Um, and again, it's just like you said, this guy, he got this role in this film, and it was, at that point, one of the biggest films there was going to be. It was The Return of Star Wars, you know. Right. Um he is. He he must have had such excitement about it. Um, he must have been jazzed about it, and he put trust in George Lucas. And George Lucas is, you know, great visionary, but historically, he's not great at directing actors. Um, in that sense, uh, or dialogue, right? And That's true. I, you can't in any way blame um the actor for a way they've been directed or something like that, you know. And if they haven't, if if the, if it is their fault. From, from a performance level um, or from an acting level that maybe they're not quite there compared to other actors that could be, then they can get better, you know? Um, and yeah, fair enough. It's it's fine to dislike their performance, but attacking them personally is just, I, I just it just baffles me. I, I can't understand it really. Does that ever get in your mind of the fear of one day you, you get into a movie and you get attacked on Instagram, on Twitter, people throwing you death threats, not only to you, but your family and your friends. Has, has that ever crossed your mind? It, it, it hasn't actually, no. Um, it should because, you know, it, fingers crossed with, with most stuff happens in my career, you know, um, I, you know, I, I do want more stuff to happen that there would be more people seeing it. But I think I thought about if I thought about it in a sense, like death threats to your family, I think I would in some way have to react to that. Um or death threats to friends. Um I it's very easy to say now, and I'd love for me to keep to this. I would only try and focus on the positives or uh it's not right you shouldn't just focus on the positives because toxic pox positive positivity comes from that. But True. focus on the people that may have disliked your performance, but gave you a good reason and gave you, sorry, gave you a reason um, for disliking it. And if that reason is respectful and if that reason is um, constructive or something like that, I would be happy to do that. Pure hate, pure hate doesn't deserve to be in this world in any form. So I probably would do my absolute best to avoid any pure hate if I was to read a tweet or a comment or something like that, I would just kind of go, okay, cool, next. And I, I, it's easy to say that now, um, and I'd love to keep to that in the future, really. Yeah. And look, we're not perfect. I mean, like, oh. Lord, Lord knows that, you know, when we try our best to be as good as we can, there, there, are, there are those times when people just pick, our, pick, pick at ourselves a little bit too much, and then we just snap, you know? And it doesn't yeah. mean you're a monster. It doesn't mean you're a bad dude. It just, it just says, look, you're human. And we got all, all our best to just learn from that. Yeah. Yeah, really well said. Yeah, no, absolutely. But see, with all this, Ross, you have done so much so far in your life, man. I know this ain't the end of the road for you. And, but if you can for us, for me, if, if you want to, I mean, I don't know, you know, if you can dab a bit on any future projects down the horizon that you're going towards. Yeah, of course. Absolutely, Ron. Um, I I'm doing something completely different at the moment where I'm actually making a film. Um, so I'm not just performing in it. I am making, um, you know, I, I'm kind of leading the production of this film and stuff as well. What else can't you do? My <laughs> gosh, Ross, you got to stop. You got to stop this. OK, I you got to quit yet. doing this. It may be terrible. We don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> um but no, I, I, this is a weird one, right? So in, um, in school, in comprehensive, I was, um, we were in history and, uh, we were, we were studying Nazi Germany and, um, the, basically the teacher, we were going through this textbook and, um, he told of this myth and this myth, ever since I heard it when I was like 12, 13 years old, I was like, how is this not more well known even as a myth, right? Have I told you this yet, what the myth is? No, you've not. Oh, oh right. Okay. So um, it's said that in World War I in 1918, um, there was a British soldier 
and this British soldier was um, like heroic. Um, he was this war hero and everything like that. And um, he got the Victorious Cross, which was one of the biggest medals you can get, uh, um, a, like a Medal of Honor in some sense, um, because of his um, amazing contributions to the war. And he was this man who was not only saving his own men, but he was sparing enemy soldiers where and when he could. He would only kill if he had to. So he was um, on this field in France and he saw this man walk across the field. And this man was a German soldier. So he lift, he raised his gun and um, the German soldier was unarmed and he was injured and he was just defenseless. He looked like he looked like a deer in the woods, you know. So they oh, looked at each other and they had this long look at each other and um, the British soldier just could not do it. He couldn't shoot him. Um, so he nodded to him and the German soldier nodded back and then he just walked off and he, and he spared him. So years, years later, in uh, 1939, Chamberlain, uh, Neville Chamberlain, who was the Prime Minister of the British at the time, he was, um, he was in this uh, house in Germany. And um, he was in this house and he saw a painting on the wall. And the painting was of the British soldier. Because this British soldier was well known. He was in newspapers. He was, um, again, the Victoria's Cross winner. Um, and he was so confused. He, he, he asked the owner of the house, he was like, why Why have you got that man on the wall? And the owner of the house said, that man saved my life in the First World War. I recognized him from the newspaper clippings. Um, so Chamberlain came back to Britain and he told the British soldier, who was now older, and he said, um, he said, I was just at this house in Germany and, and apparently you saved this man and he has this painting of you on the wall. And the British soldier said, what's the name of the man? And he said, oh, his name's uh, Adolf Hitler. Oh snap! Oh, <laughs> oh! What? That's kind of that's kind of the reaction that's kind of happened since it all, really. Um, so this, as the myth goes, is the man who spared Adolf Hitler, and then Hitler would become, unfortunately, who he would become. But of course, at that time, he was just a German soldier that this man spared, and that wow. myth. That myth, I've always just thought, even as a myth, there's so many themes in that and stuff, you know. So I, I Cinemus, I mentioned earlier, I've worked with a few times now. They're a film company in in Wales. Um, and I, I, I was talking to them and I was like, I have this idea for a film. Um, and, you know, I kind of pitched it to them and they were just like, yes, let's do it yesterday. You know, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think. And um, I came up with this idea, and it's this idea of um, this man after the Second World War, the British soldier, and it's him talking to this barmaid, um, and they're just two nice people having a conversation, and this barmaid finds out uh, his name, and she gets really starstruck. She's like, oh, my God, you're the, you're the war hero. You did this, you did this. And the more starstruck she gets, the more, you know, the more guilt he feels because he's thinking about that moment. Um, and this is a myth. So the British soldier who I, um, who I mentioned, but obviously you may have noticed I haven't named, um, there is a reason for that in the way that this man who won the Victorious Cross and did all this amazing stuff, he actually e existed. He's real. Oh. But the myth, of the, the, the myth of the Hitler incident, um, on the field, that is very much debated. And I don't want to release this film and for people to look up this man's name and go, oh, my God, this is the man, you know, who spared ah, Hitler and stuff like I that. And it's like, I, I, I don't want to, because some people, as we know, watch films and they don't right. look into the films in any way, which is fine, and they don't research. And I don't want people to go, oh, that guy, oh, that's the guy that's, you know, I, I can't, I can't do that to his legacy and stuff, really. So our character, our British soldier is kind of loosely based off him. But the myth, um, the myth of sparing one of the most evil human beings alive, that is very much the topic of our film. And um, it's this film about PTSD, this film about being a very good person and doing amazing things, and sometimes out of your control, it's not your fault, but terrible things happen from that. And it's what you do with that, whether you need to still be proud of yourself, or if you do take on this mammoth guilt. 
Um, and it's just two people sat at a table, Ron, um, for about 15 minutes talking about pretty interesting conversation. And, um, and it's about, I, I won't say anything else, but we're in pre-production for that. Um, we're currently doing the script for it. And um, again, I've been so lucky um, and so humbled by the response because I kind of told the synopsis um, online and I did it pretty similar to how I talked to it about you, about it to you then. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was expect I, I put a casting call out, which was surreal. I put a casting call out for our main actress because I'm going to play the older version of the British soldier. So I'm going to be made up to look like I'm in my sixties, which should be an interesting experience. Well, um, and, uh, and the, we needed a main actress to be the barmaid because this is very much a co-lead situation. So I put up a casting call um, and I was expecting, cause again, I'm not, I'm not big time or anything like that. So I was expecting maybe 20, 30 people to apply. I got 700 applications um wow from, look at wow yeah, that's, that's from, a from big number that's <laughs> like and what was hilarious is that before before i posted i was like right i'm gonna email every single person back even if they don't get the role i'm gonna give them feedback and give them constructive and stuff like that and i said <laughs> that <laughs> i said that and then 700 applications come in and i'm like oh my god well um, all right then and i still did I, I emailed i emailed uh each person back i watched 700 um wow. auditions because people did self tapes as well and um i gave feedback to uh every single person really and i thought it was important you know because people you know i think there's this thing of like i i really find it hard when actors put their heart and soul into auditioning and people don't have the time to at, le- at least reply to say that unfortunately we've gone with someone else um and you know th- maybe there's an excuse that they don't have enough time if i can do 700 email <laughs> email oh, replies i don't want to hear no more excuse from anybody else dang exactly good. exactly i just did it on a sunday and 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 yeah and and honestly the response the talent that i saw from these self tapes um it was really humbling and i've had um production companies get interested in um in co- collaborating on the project i've had composers get in touch with me to want to get involved and i didn't even um apply for imp- composers I, I think a lot of people see um see a potential in this story you know because again it is in my opinion one of the biggest what ifs in human history i mean i, I don't think there's there's a you know even as a myth i don't think there's any debate to that that the butterfly effect of this myth is so in, in, interesting and intriguing i've just always wanted to explore it and i've i've never understood how a film about this topic has never been made i can't believe it i still can't believe it so i was like i need to jump on this you know you just basically you know put out like why a film like this hasn't been like really made yet. I mean, granted, we've seen a lot of other controversial films you know been put out there. Yes. Yeah. But this story, and sorry, this myth that you know you're putting out, yeah, I can fully under- see why s- the story has never been touched. Yeah. So, but but you know the the risk, you know the, I, I'm not gonna say consequences, but the backlash of, pe- of people in the internet because of how we the, the the social world we live in today. Yes, absolutely. So absolutely. So does that. Does that give you more of a drive to get this done? Like, even though, yeah. like, I know what I know that I'm, I might get flack for this, you know, but this is yeah. something that I feel it's a good story and I yes. feel it needs to be told. Yeah, I, I, like, th- I'll be honest, the the British soldier, the actual person, he it was actually going to be him to begin with. It was actually going to be his name. Um, and we had a really big discussion about that because I really want to honor him because without giving away the ending of the film, it's a very positive ending. Um, and this man did such amazing things that I wanted to focus on that. Um, but again, I couldn't, I couldn't in any way tarnish this guy's legacy if it is a myth and if it is debated. Um, so I needed to be like, okay, we need to change the name and stuff like that. Um, as far as like the topic of course, Hitler is a controversial topic by name alone. Right. Um, I I'm very the reason why the scripting process has taken quite a while for us is uh, I'm very 
um, respectful of um, getting this story right because this man, this monster, he he affected millions of lives, and you know through family, through um, and you know people passed on. Unfortunately, he's affected millions more. Um, so I'm. It's a it's a really big task, but the message of this film um, at at the end, and again, I can't really give it away. I really want to say something about good people who who the world may be telling you sometimes, I don't know if you've ever been told this, Ron, but I've been told two words before, which is too nice, which mm-hmm. drives me nuts because too nice to me is not an insult. And and I think that people who are good, people who are good, good, good and true to themselves and to the people around them and who are generally nice people, I think they need to be celebrated more. Um, and I think people need to stop um, feeling like it's a criticism against themselves that they are nice um, and they are a really good hearted person. So I really want to say that with this film and obviously the myth with it is a powerful, really powerful way to do it in some ways. So it's it's a balancing act in some ways, but I really think that with me and my team, um, I think we can pull it off. And if we do pull it off, you know, it's going to be it's going to be pretty cool and it's going to say a lot. And um and yeah, we've got film festival interest already, and um, we've potentially going to get another screening in Athens as well. Um, so it's a lot going on, and we haven't even written the script yet. So that's mad, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, we already seen the the before the movie came out the the whole tirade of our Jojo Rabbit before that film came out. Yeah, so, yes, yeah and I can and if what Jojo got, I can imagine what. Even when it get, the name gets dropped on when the movie is and they read the synopsis, I can't imagine just the reaction it would be. But, but Ross, I am – look, man, this is something that, that you just told me about, and I'm already, like, hooked in on this. Yeah. And whenever this comes out next year, two years, three years, it doesn't matter. Whenever it drops, man, you got to put me on that because I got to <laughs> check that out for myself. <laughs> Of course I will, my man. I still, I still got stuff to se- to send you as well. Like I need, I need to send you loads of stuff. Absolutely, of course I'll let you know. Yes, as everybody, you know, I've been talking to Ross, and it's been a good time. We get to, we got to know about him, about his his ups, him becoming an actor, his films, his work, and things that you didn't even know about the guy. And also, too, don't get it twisted. The guy can also dab in some music. All right, this guy was in the music video. And- <laughs> That one caught me a little bit off guard. Yeah, yeah. So, it, did you, you see that one? Oh, scars with it, yeah. The group's name is the Five O Ones. That's it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That was that was a blast. And I'm not the biggest, you know, rock roll guy. I'm not. Yeah. You know, I, I could say that without lying. Yeah. But when you when I saw it on on your IMDb that you were in it, I will. You know what? I'm gonna check it out just for Ross. I'm gonna check it out for myself. Yeah, that was an intense one. That was that was a day. That was a day shot. That was a day shoot. That was um, and whole day. A whole day, yeah. And um, you'll notice that I got a beard for some scenes, and um, I'm clean shaved without. What we yes. literally did was we filmed the beard stuff first, and I literally shaved my beard off on the beach using uh, <laughs> seawater. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> it was intense. Yeah, it was intense. Um, and oh my god, the crew on that was great. Brad Lee was our director, and um, the band have been so supportive. And I have to give a shout out to Tori Tori Lyons, who's the actress who plays um, my girlfriend in it. And man, she she brought it. Let me tell yeah. you, the, the scene in the car, you know, when she's in oh, pain. Yes, god, I wasn't acting, Ron. <laughs> I wasn't acting in that scene. I was like, she was. It was so real that I I didn't need to act. I was just being natural to her performance, and it was like the the thing of re- reacting is good acting. I was just reacting to her an amazing, her amazing performance, and she was, ah, oh, incredible, absolutely awesome. Is there a difference between acting in a movie and acting in a music video? Yes, absolutely. I'd say, I'd say, um, it's a lot more chill the music video because obviously you can, you can get directed as it's being shot. You know, because the because the audio isn't being used because the music's going to be going over it anyway. The director can literally be talking to you and giving you directions as as the, as they're filming you, because 
you, your dialogue isn't going to be heard or anything like that. So it's so chilled in that way. And um, in that car scene, for an example, while Tori was in pain and stuff like that, like I, Bradley, the director, was in my in my um, passenger seat. So we were actually driving around at like midnight in the night in Swansea. Um, and um, he was telling me like, oh, Ross, you know, uh, hold her, hold her now. And filming and stuff like that so it was a really chilled out gorilla but but gorilla way of ma- filmmaking and it was cool like absolutely yeah man ross you have done so much for yourself man and it takes a lot to do all this you know oh thanks, and, man. and i see that what you're doing yourself that you know sky's the limit you're gonna continue to grow and be way big that you're gonna probably make them boys up in Hollywood, you're going to make them sweat. Thinking about, oh, how come I ain't got that role? Oh, because it went to a guy named Ross. That's what's going to happen. Oh, thanks, man. I, 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 hope I, can, I, I hope I can make people sweat. That's always been my goal. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sways. Maybe not. Maybe not. Now, but no, I appreciate that. Oh, please, man. Come on. And get everybody, as you know, this is getting real. And we just had a phenomenal conversation with Ross Leash. And Ross, this is where I throw it out to my guests, and well, I'll do the same to you. For anybody that's been by your side, anyone that you want to give them them love, the respect, the floor is yours. Go on, and do it. Thank you for that, mate. Um, I have my family, um, Rose, Ez, and, and Tim. I have to give them uh, their shout out. My extended family, um, all my friends. Like, um, I got to give a shout out to Floyd, who's been like a rock to me. Um, he's been like a like a conscience in some ways. Yeah, I just want to give a shout out as well to um, my agents and management and all the community and clients involved with that and they're all their talent management and they are so supportive and so awesome in every way. Um, and all the people I've worked with and I have to, from a stardust level, um, Jackson, um, again, our boy Jackson Hendricks, I mm-hmm. have to give him a shout out because... What a supportive young man and um, passionate and talented. And he's got some cool projects coming up, man, which I know he talked to you about. And yeah, he does. Um, yes. he just, he's just such a great, great young guy, you know. And Stephanie as well. Um, Stephanie Gallardo. Who of course. Is, is, she, is she or is she not the nicest person on planet Earth? It still like, blows my mind every time I speak <laughs> with her. I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just like, there's nobody this nice. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. I, Honestly, like the positivity that comes from that girl, I'm like, how how would you do this? We're all we're all terrible people. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and and Michael and all the guys on on the Anadonia shoot, um, and everyone. I mean, I, when I say it, it's it's an easy thing to say, you've got a supportive network around you, but I do have a supportive network around me. Um, and all the stardusters who uh, continue to give me support. So uh, film enthusiasts, Aaron, you know, people like that. And um, and um, his sister, Megan. And Austin Burke, who is um, really doing amazingly with his YouTube channel. And um, he's awesome. great in that sense. And, yeah, the stardust community in, in general, Ron, as I'm sure you'll agree with. I mean, I, there's been the odd troll that comes into any community. But I've never seen a community. Like any other one. Yeah, like any other one. Any other one. But I've never seen a community with the the like has such like positive to each other and so respectful to each other than, than the Stardust community as far as social media goes, you know. Um right. so good in that sense. And um and yeah, I, I it uh, the thing is is I, I, I know I'll feel bad now that I've mentioned people, but there's too many people to mention and I'm and that alone um makes me think, wow, I'm really lucky in that sense, you know. And the last thing I got for you, and again, I appreciate you taking your time for us to sit down and just get real with each other. You know, yep. it was a long one, but man, I had a fun <laughs> time talking with you, Ross. No doubt this my mind was just... film, Ron. I'm looking at the time. This is an hour and a half. We have made a film. <laughs> <laughs> watch out. I'm going to put it on, on my resume director, so they got to watch out for me now. And I got to thank you as well, Ron. Like, honestly, um, thank you so much for this. And I've said this many times already, but you got such a talent for this. And um, and and I, I, any voice work you got, please send it over. Like, it goes in that way as well. I'm flipping the script again, Ron. I'm sorry. But, like, <laughs> I told you I was going to blow smoke. But I really wish you all the best of luck. Um, because, again, I could see that passion in yourself. And, like, thank you so much 
for um, giving me the opportunity to just have a chat. It's been really cool, man. And with that, guys, my name is Ronald E. Smith, and this is Ross Leeshin. And guys, I think we just got real. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you again. Have a good day. Thank you.